Hello, our church family and friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so thankful that you're here. Our church is a non-denominational church that meets in Madison, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. If you are in the southern Wisconsin area, we would invite to you to make our church your church today. Now, this message is recorded and then streamed live across several platforms so everybody can watch the same message at the same time it's being preached. But again, this is a recording, and we would love for you to come be in person with us. We worship together. We celebrate together. We live life together and would love for you to be a part. If you live too far outside of the southern Wisconsin area, continue to join us online. I love to see our online family. Okay, let's jump right into the message. We are ending our series of Advent, and today I've titled this Love. Now, Advent comes from the word Adventus, which means the arrival of something or someone in Important. And let me tell you, there is nothing more important than the coming of our Lord and Savior. Yes, the birth of Jesus, and we are in you know, December, Advent, but it is so much more than that. We as believers are looking for the second coming of our Savior. We live in this season. This season should never go away for us. We are constantly looking for the second coming of our Savior. Advent is more than just hanging up decorations and exchanging gifts. It is a time of preparation and it is a time of expectation. We are going to celebrate on the 25th the birth of our Savior, but we are going to continue to look and have anticipation for His glorious return. Today, we're going to dive deep into the depth of God's love. And as believers, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit through faith. And we are called to cultivate love that is a transformation. It transforms our lives and impacts those around us. Today, we will explore three vital points that exemplifies the significance of love in our everyday lives. Which brings me to my first point, agape love. Now, this is a foundation for all relationships, not only our relationship with the Lord, but our relationship with each other. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4. This is very commonly known as the love uh, verses here. And so let's look at it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity, but not itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hope all things, and endures all things. I'm going to tell you right now, that is a mouthful. The word charity here is the word agape, which is translated as love in the New Testament 68 times. It's translated more love than it is charity. Love is the bedrock upon which all relationships are built. Agape love, the selfless, unconditional love that God shows upon us should flow through our every interaction that we may come in contact with or have with others. As we embrace His love, we exhibit patience, kindness, and forgiveness. Let us remember that love is not easily provoked. It keeps no records of wrongs, and it always preserves. By cultivating agape love, we forge unbreakable bonds that brings healing and restoration to all our relationships. My second point is authentic love. It is a reflection of our faith. When we have authentic love, 
It is absolutely one of the most beautiful expressions of the faith that God has shed abroad in our hearts. 1 John 4 and 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God, and he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. Everyone who knows God knows love. Everyone who does not know God does not know love. If you have love, you know God. If you do not have love, you do not know God. If you are full of hate and strife and that dominates your life, it is because you have not let the knowledge of the love of God dominate you. You have not submitted to the knowledge of who God truly is. Our love for one another is a tangible expression of our faith. When we love genuinely and we love sincerely, we mirror the divine love that dwells within us. Authentic love transcends mere words. It demands actions. You know, the scripture about faith in James, where it says faith without works is dead. I would like to put this thing out for your thought process. Love without actions is dead. It is not alive. It is lifeless. It is inactive. It is unproductive. It is not love. Love must have actions follow it. Let our love be a beacon of hope in a world filled with darkness. By demonstrating love through the acts of compassion and generosity and selflessness, we become a living testimony of God's love, drawing others close to Him. I'm going to tell you, when you walk in the love of God, the world doesn't really recognize it. They may be suspicious. They may think you're doing something to gain something or to get something. But when you walk in the love that passes all understanding, when you walk in the love that God has shed in your heart, the love that God demonstrates, you become a living testimony. My third point is abundant love. This is a foundation of blessings. Let's look at John chapter 15 and verse 9. As the Father has loved me, now this is Jesus speaking to us. He's saying, as the Father has loved him, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I love you. As we abide in God's love, we are invited to experience the abundance of His blessing. When we abide in His love, we are filled with joy that surpasses all understanding. It is through love that we cultivate a vibrant relationship with our Lord. As Jesus commanded, let us love one another as He has loved us. In doing so, we open the floodgates of divine favor and pouring blessings upon our lives and the lives of everyone around us. God never does anything. Never any blessing that doesn't bless others. God is in the multiplication effect. When He blesses you, He wants you to bless others. God's blessing never ends with just you. 
It's for your family. It's for your friends. It's for strangers who you've never even met yet. The blessing of God on your life continues and he wants it to flow out from you to generation to generation to generation because you walk in the blessings of God today. Your kids and your grandkids and your nieces and your nephews and your cousins and your sisters, brothers, goldfish, whatever it is, will know the blessing of the Lord, will experience the blessing of the Lord because you decided to walk in love, which opens blessings in your life. I'm wrapping it up here. Now let's look. Perfect love cast out all fear. 1 John 4 and 18. Love has a profound impact on our lives. Love has an impact on our journey of faith, inspiring us to let go of all fear and embrace a life of compassion, empathy, and understanding. Let's let go of anything that would hinder the love of God in our lives and allow love to permeate every aspect of our being eradicating fear and installing in us a renewed sense of hope and purpose. May we as a community of believers be living testament to the profound truth that love has the power to conquer all fear. Let us go forth with hearts overflowing, with love ready to share this message of transformation this message to the world that is around us. As we continue in this season to celebrate the Advent, let us remember that love is not a mere sentiment. It is a transformation. It is a force that has the power to change lives, heal wounds, draw others closer to our Heavenly Father. May we strive to cultivate a gothe love. May our love be authentic and a reflection of our faith. May we embrace the abundance of blessing that flow from a life grounded in love. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit and we are instruments of God's love in a broken world. My friend, I want to encourage you that in this season that we celebrate the birth of our Savior, in this Advent season, it does not end on Christmas Day because we are looking and we are celebrating Advent for the second coming of our Savior. This love should continue to bubble up and overflow from inside of us. It should control and dictate every word we say, every action that we do. And I want to remind you that love without action is dead. And that same love that is in our hearts, that comes out in our emotions, that comes out in our hope, that helps us live in peace, that same love cast out all fear. And that we obey the Lord and follow after Him, fearing nothing. We don't fear our, to have our hearts broken. We don't fear what this world can and may do to us. That we are confident, fully persuaded that God is love. And that He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will always be concerned with those things that we are concerned about. And that we will stand still and we will see the hand of the Lord. My friend, thank you so much for joining us today. Our church, again, is a non-denominational church that meets in Madison, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And we would invite you to make our church your church today. This Advent season, if you're hearing this message and you've never given your life to Jesus, the way we become the family of God, the Bible tells us that if we would believe that He is our Savior, that we would confess Him with our mouths and believe in our heart, we shall be saved. If you've never done that, normally I lead you in a prayer. But today I want you to just make it personal. 
I want you to call out to the Lord, confess Him, tell Him that you believe in Him, and you will be, not might be, you will be saved. <laughs> I want to tell you something. God will put His super on your natural, and you will be, not might be, you will be a mighty force for the Lord. God is good, and His mercy endures forever. And I just want to say, God bless you. Merry Christmas, and I hope to see you in person or online next week.